Hello, this is a tutorial on how to play video using your Argon R1 Gadgeteer board from Love Electronics. You will need an Argon R1, a SciTech or GHI display, an SD card and an SD card module. So to play video on a Gadgeteer board like the Argon, the microcontroller that runs it doesn't have the power to decode video from an MP4 or MPEG type codec. So what we need to do is convert the file we want to play into raw data that we can just stream directly to the LCD display from the SD card. So I've already got a file that I want to transcode here and I'm going to take seven seconds out of that file, put it on an SD card and we're going to write a Gadgeteer application that will then display that on the LCD. So the tool you need to transcode it is called FFmpeg. So you can go and download that from the FFmpeg site. There's a link down here. Download the correct version, whether it's 32-bit or 64-bit for your machine. Okay, now the only file we need out of this is in the bin directory. It's called ffmpeg.exe. Just draw that to a working directory. Okay, now it's in here. So what we want to do now is open up a command window so we can actually use the tool. Set the current directory to your working directory. You can see inside here we've got ffmpeg and the evo.mp4 file we want to display. That's just a standard mp4 video. You can open that in uh, Windows Player and just go through that. So what we want to do is take seven seconds out of that that we're going to uh, put on an SD card. So I've already pre-prepared a command here for ffmpeg. So what this does is it calls ffmpeg, sets the input file to evo.mp4, sets the start time of the transcoding to 3 minutes 32 seconds, sets the duration of the transcode to 7 seconds, sets the frame rate to 22 frames per second and the output size to 480 by 272 pixels. That's the right size for our SciTech display. If you're working with a GHI display you probably want to change that. And we're going to set the pixel format to be BGR565 which is the 16-bit pixel data we need uh, for a Gadgeteer board. And we're going to output that to output slash output percent 4 draw Now what that percent 4 d does is it specifies that we want to output each frame individually and we're going to number the files from zero onwards. So if we execute that, that'll just take a moment to transcode the video. There we go. Now if we look inside our output directory we can see in here that we've got loads of these raw files and these are basically just raw bitmap data that we can send directly to the LCD. But rather than loading each file individually, which takes a little bit of time in Gadgeteer, what we're going to do is compact all those together into one file that we can just stream sections out of it. So I've got a command for that too. So that'll just copy everything out of the output directory into a single output.raw file. So what that's done is generate us a 32 megabyte uh, file here. So what we're now going to do is drag that to an SD card. The SD card needs to be formatted in FAT32 mode. Once we've got that on the card, we're then going to go and write a Gadgeteer application to display that. Okay, so now I've written the uh, video data directly to our SD card. So what we're going to do now is write a Gadgeteer application that's actually going to render that then to the display. So open Visual Studio and let's start a new Gadgeteer application. Let's call that um, Video Demo SD Card. So now what we want to do is add in the actual uh, components we're going to use. So we need from GHI a SD card adapter and we need from SciTech the LCD Touch. There we go. So we can just right click and do connect all modules to connect those up. And now we can start writing some code. So first of all what we want to do is be notified when the SD card is actually inserted. So to do that what you need to do is use um, removable media add the namespace for that and attach to the insert event. So this event will get executed when the SD card is inserted. So now what we're going to do to display this data is use a dual buffer. So whilst it's loading data into one buffer, it can be displayed in the other buffer, which means we get a much smoother video. So I'm going to create um, an integer which will tell us how large actual frames are going to be. So this is going to be the LC Dutch touch width times the LC Dutch height times two. 
So in other words, we want 16-bit um, data. So it's the width times the height is the total pixels, and it's 16 bits, which is two bytes. Cast that to an integer. Whoops. And now we're going to create two buffers. What we also want uh, is a boolean to know which buffer we're going to use. Okie dokie, so now what we need to do is read the actual data from the SD card. So we'll create a new file stream, again add a reference there. And we know it's called output.raw, so we're going to go to the SD card, output.raw, and we're going to open that. Now what we're going to do is basically spin through this file and display each frame to the LCD controller. So that's really easy. All we do is while the stream.position is less than the stream.length, in other words, whilst there's still data in the stream, we're going to uh, say to the LCD controller, this is a special operation on the Argon board which allows us to control the LCD controller directly. Add a reference for that. Uh, we're going to set the upper frame buffer to be dependent on which is the current active buffer. So, if the active buffer is true, then we're going to send the back buffer to the LCD controller. Otherwise, we're going to send the front buffer to the LCD controller. Now what we're going to do is load data into the buffer we've not currently displayed. So we don't get that kind of stuttering effect when we're loading the data. So we're going to do stream.read. So if the active buffer is true, this time we're going to load it to the front buffer otherwise the back buffer, and we're going to load our entire frame size, which is 255 kilobytes into there. Then what we're going to do is flip which active buffer we're currently using, like that. So now when we actually send this to the Argon board, that should be really all we need to actually run video on here. So I'm just going to choose which board we're going to use. There we go, so we're going to go USB, use this Argon board, save that away, and we can now send that to the Argon board. So what we can do is insert the SD card into the module, and it should now start playing. Okay, so that worked okay, but what would be nice is to know how many frames per second we actually got reading that, and as from that we can determine the actual read speed we're currently getting from the SD card. So to do that, what I'm going to do is add some variables here. Let's stop this debugging so we can edit it. We'll have an integer called frames, which we can increment each time we go around our loop, so we know how many frames we've done. And we're going to have two date times a start and end, so we know when we've started our loop and when we finish. So from that we can figure out how long it took to actually execute the, the entire thing. So I'm going to create a new integer which is uh, frame time, so that's how long it's going to take to display a single frame. And to do that, we're going to calculate the amount of time we've used, which is uh, end, take, start, get the number of ticks, divide that by time span dot ticks per millisecond, which will give us the number of milliseconds it took for the entire operation. And we're going to divide that by frames, cast the entire thing to an integer. So that will tell us how many milliseconds it took to display each frame. So let's output that. There we go. And what we also want to know is how many frames per second that is. So frames per second equals 1000 milliseconds in a second divided by the frame time. So that will be frames per second, frames per second. 
So let's push that to the board and see what we get. Okay, so the board's rebooted, so we'll insert the SD card. There we go, it's playing now. So now it's finished. It takes 43 milliseconds per frame, and that is 23 frames per second. So what we also want to find out is how fast we're actually reading the data from the card. So we're going to do that now. So what I want to know is how many total, the total amount of milliseconds it actually took. So total milliseconds, we can reuse this formula we've done here. So that's total number of milliseconds. We'll just fix this up here. Okay, and we also want to know the total amount of data in megabytes. So that will be uh, the frame size times the number of frames divided by 1024 to turn it into kilobytes divided by 1024 to turn it into megabytes. Oh, we just need a semicolon on there. Okay, so to calculate the data rate, we want to get the total data megabytes and divide that by seconds, which will be total milliseconds divided by 1000 milliseconds. We can then output that in the debug window. Okay, so that should be quite interesting. Let's send that to the board and uh, we'll see what we get. Okay, so what it's calculated is we're currently reading data at 6.39 uh, megabytes per second, which is pretty decent really considering we're on a managed platform here. The thing that really allows us to get that speed is how fast the memory's running in the Argon R1. So the memory's running at 120 megahertz and it's over a 32-bit bus, which is unique to the Argon, which is how we're able to get that speed and thus render the video at uh, near real, real time to the LCD display. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Um, sorry it's quite short. I'll post the code online on our forum, loveelectronics.co.uk forward slash forum. And remember to run this application, you're going to need the latest firmware on your Argon R1, and you can download that from argonr1.com. So if you'd like any other tutorials, make sure you register at the forum and let us know what, you, uh, what you'd like.